Well, hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. This is actually a cautionary tale and you will find out what I mean. So please watch this video all the way to the end where I will explain what exactly happened and why I say this is a cautionary tale. Well, hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Miss Crochet and Coffee here. And today we're back with another Cricut Mug Press Craft. Yes! So today, we're going to do something that I was asked to do in one of my last videos. Now, you guys know I've been experimenting and doing all kinds of random things with the Cricut Mug Press. And I was asked in one of my videos, Hey, Miss Coffee, can you sublimate in the Cricut Mug Press glass? And I'm thinking, well, yeah, why not? If they make glass sublimation, why shouldn't you be able to do it in a mug press, right? Right. So I let the person know that I would be making sure to do a video. So this is said video. So as you can see, I sublimated this glass. And we're going to zoom you in a little bit so you can see the deets. So I sublimated this glass. And don't worry about this part. That's just paper that got a little stuck to it. But I did two types of glass. I did frosted and then I did clear. And of course, we have our frosted mugs and our clear mugs. Now, I haven't seen anyone use the Cricut Mug Press for these types of mugs. And of course, I know you can do it, so I'm gonna show you how I do it. All right, so first things first, you need to find a design. Bam, design. I always do this part for you guys so you don't have to sit there and watch me fiddle around with the design. I use Silhouette. Uh, they do have a free version where you don't have to have the Silhouette machine because I have a Cricut machine. So I use Silhouette. Um, and then I, because I can make stuff bigger in there and print it out than I can in Cricut Design Space. So I will use Silhouette for my designs. If I can find where I got these mug, because uh, this actually came in an 11 ounce mug uh, bundle where they had a bunch of different designs. And both of these designs came from said bundle. I will make sure to find the bundle and link it down below. I will also link my printer, my ink, my paper, the mug press, all the things. Okay, so. I found two designs that I like that I wanted to sublimate with you guys today. So we're going to do these two designs. So since I did the Geo on the frosted mug here, and as you can see, that turned out really cool. I love how that turned out. And then I did a regular pattern on this one, which is like the little animal print hearts. Um, on these mugs, I am going to do the opposite. So I'm going to do the Geo on the glass and then mustachio, as I call it. I'm gonna do that one on the frosted. So let's get started. So first things first, obviously you have to get glass mugs. Now you can find these glass mugs just about anywhere. I've got these at Coastal something. I will have them linked down below. It was very hard finding fro uh, not so much frosted mugs, but the clear mugs. Everybody seems to be out of them right now unless you wanna pay like the ridiculous price that they offer on Etsy. So I got a couple of mugs. And, you, of course, you just want to make sure it's free of debris. And then you're going to take your design. And, of course, just like anything else, you're just going to wrap it around. So we're just going to wrap this around here. And what I like to do is I like to do it upside down. That way uh, the bottom of it uh, is, or the top of it gets all the design. I'm not so much worried about the bottom. Um, as for my design sizes, I did... A width of 9.3 and a height of 3.750. I will, of course, have that pop up on the screen for you because I like giving you guys the sizes. Now, it might be just a tad too big. Like, you don't want it to essentially touch that handle. So, you can trim it down, but I'm not going to trim it down. I'm going to leave it just like that. Um, you just want to make sure it's on there nice and tight, and I am going to trim it down a little bit because it is just a tad bit too big. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, I'm actually going to take my X-Acto knife. Now, I do not suggest cutting on your Cricut mat because you will slice a hole in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a, something else to cut on. I'm just going to cut on this. And you just want to cut not too much off, just a little bit. I would rather print it and have it have too much than have it not have enough. So we're going to cut that off. Boop. Just like that. It's a little willow wonky. We're going to fix that. All right, so we trimmed it up just a little bit so we can get rid of the rest of this. All right. going to lift you up a little bit here so you can see what I'm doing. Next thing you want to do, get your tape. 
we gotta tape it on there. So, just like with a tumbler, you're gonna just make sure it's on there nice and tight. I'm just gonna move it around so that my edges are even. And again, I'm gonna flip it upside down to make sure that design touches the top. I'm not so much worried about it touching the bottom. I want it to touch that top area. And then I'm just gonna smooth it over with my fingers here just to make sure there's no air bubbles or anything. Even though you would think because it's a round shape that it wouldn't have a problem like just wrapping around. Sometimes they do. So you need a little, it needs a little assistance. So we're just gonna tape that on there really good. Somebody said something about shrink wrap. Now, I don't know how well the shrink wrap would work in the Cricut Mug Press. I don't feel like it's needed in the Cricut Mug Press only because the Mug Press already hugs the design to the cup. So you don't necessarily have to worry about like, if you're doing it in a convection oven, okay. But on with the Mug Press, I don't honestly think you need the shrink wrap because of the way it hugs your cup. So, I mean, I don't know how well it would work in the, the Mug Press. Because I know when I put it in my convection oven, it uh, melted. So yeah, I don't know about that. So we're just gonna do that. And we don't want that tape sticking up like that. So you wanna make sure you rub your tape down good. This is gonna be a pain in the butt to get off whenever it's hot. All right. Then I'll take my scissors of doom. Sorry, I wanna make sure you guys can see what I'm doing here. And then I'm just gonna slit the tape right where that handle is so that the tape lays down. I'm gonna do the same thing right here as it's lifted up. If you can't see it, it's lifted up right there. So I'm just gonna take it and slit it on both sides so that those two sides lay down. And then we have some extra uh, paper on the bottom. And then what you can do, take your scissors, go around, use the cup as a guide. And you just cut that extra tape off. Or the extra paper, I should say, not tape. Then I'm just gonna bloop. And then we're gonna retape that down. Forgot to turn on my mug press. So while that's heating up, we'll tape the other design too. So we're not wasting time. All right, so we have that design on there nice and tight and you wanna just make sure it's nice and tight. Now you can wrap the top and bottom, but this isn't tall enough to go over the top of the mug press, so I don't worry about doing the top and bottom. I didn't on this one, and as you can see, it didn't ghost or anything, so I'm not too worried about it. If it's shorter than the mug press itself, I wouldn't worry about having to do all that extra tape and save yourself some tape. So, all right, hold on a second. Mug press was giving me a little bit of a warning there. I was getting a little scared. All right, so the next thing I want to do, Whereas we're gonna tape that other design on. And it's just a blank geo type looking design. And I want that gold at the top there. So what we're gonna do, and I already trimmed this one down. So what we're gonna do here, we're just gonna make sure it's on there good. We're just gonna tape it down. So we're gonna tape it down just like this. tape to tape it down because you of course don't want it to pop back up and because it's around that handle you want to make sure you tape that part down really really good all right now that those are both taped up taped up nice and good it's not going anywhere we're going to go ahead and give it a few minutes to let the heat press heat up and we're back Okay, so you're gonna notice that a couple of things have changed, mostly my nails. So, let me explain this while my heat press is heating up. Um, for you, that was a blink. For me, that was actually about a week and a half. Let me explain what happened. While I was recording the video you just seen before it clicked over to this video, um, I got an error message on my Cricut mug press. So, uh, it, flash some lights and then a red light came on. I was a little confused as to what this meant. Um, I wasn't thinking anything was wrong because I had just gotten this machine. So I went over to Cricut 
on their website, they have troubleshooting for your Cricut mug press. Um, the error code that it was throwing was that there was something unusual in the mug press, which as you guys know, there was nothing unusual in the mug press, just these glass mugs that I, well, I hadn't even put them in there yet. Um, the only thing that I had made that morning was this mug here, which is the animal print, um, sorry, I gotta, oop, which was the animal print mug I made, and then the frosted mug that I made with uh, my catchphrase on it. That was the only thing in the mug press that morning. So for it to throw that error code, I was looking in it, couldn't figure it out, you know, what's going on, why is my mug press throwing this error code? So then I finally got a hold of Cricut because that was during the weekend that, and I wasn't able to get a hold of them until Monday. And I talked to the customer service agent. She went over a few things with me. She had me show her a few things. And then they went ahead and sent out me a new mug press. So the process with this was essentially I had to show them what error code it was throwing. We went through the troubleshooting. It did not help the, the Cricut mug press start working again. So what they did was they sent me out a mug press. And then I have to send them the old one so that they can figure out what went wrong with that mug press so that they can fix it and possibly make sure it doesn't happen to anybody else. So if you get an error code with your mug press, please feel free to contact Cricut's customer service. They were very nice. The whole process was maybe 10 minutes and they had already, you know, shipped me out another mug press and I had it within like four days. So thank you to the folks over at Cricut for fixing my mug press. I love the machine and I was very heartbroken to see that my mug press decided that it was just going to stop working. Um, and I know somebody's going to be like, well, could have been the cardboard. The problem with that is if it was the cardboard, then it would have thrown the error. Because if you've watched my other Cricut videos, which I have an entire playlist now, um, if you watch my other Cricut mug press videos, that error code never popped up before. And I've used the mug press on numerous occasions to show you guys tumblers and all other kinds of different things. Um, it never shot that error code until that day. And the only thing I had in there that day were these two mugs. Um, and the Cricut mug press can sublimate and do the Cricut thing on the glass mugs. So I was unsure as to why it all of a sudden said that. Plus, I've been honest also, uh, I haven't used the cardboard for a while. Like I think I did it for like one or two videos. And then I've been using the, oh, my press is ready. I've been using the silicone trivets. And every other video that I saw after mine's broke, um, I looked and nobody else was having issues with theirs except for me. So I'm going to guess I might have just had, a, it might have just been like something that went bad in it or what have you. But it's getting replaced or it's been replaced and I am sending back the old one tomorrow. So enough of that. That's three minutes of your time that was wasted. Let's get back to Cricut Matter, shall we? So we have our mug press, right? Right. So what we're going to do, and because the mug press, uh, because we're sublimating mugs, and I already have my designs on there from last time. Like, I didn't touch anything. I left everything as it was so that when I made the video, you guys could see that I, I'm not touching anything. And I'm going to bring you out just a little bit so that you can see what I'm doing here. Here we go. So then what I'm going to do is, and this is sublimation. So I'm using a sub paper. I have a frosted mug, which you can tell the frosted from the glass because obviously one's going to look a little bit uh, more opaque. Um, so I have the frosted mug here. It already has the design that I want on it. Now, because this is a mug, I believe this is a 10 ounce mug. <sighs> I believe. I'm not 100% sure on that. It'll be in the description box of the video. So everything that I use in this video will be in the description box. So we're going to go ahead and slide that right on in there. And it does fit. Um, I was a little worried about it touching the bottom. So I was like, maybe if I just have it float, it'll ease my mind a little bit. Because I don't like I don't like the idea of the glass being in there like that. So as you can see, the light is on. And there's nothing unusual about this product. So it is a mug that I'm sublimating, which this obviously this machine can do. Uh, I was asked about parchment paper or butcher paper, I should say. Um, 
why don't I use butcher paper? My A sub paper doesn't seem to bleed when it's in the mug press. Um, you are more than welcome to put butcher paper on your project when you put it in. I did notice that when I, I, cause I've only done one mug with the in infusible ink and the infusible ink, yes, it does bleed. So I would highly recommend you use it for the infusible ink. But if you're sublimating using A sub paper or paper like A sub paper, uh, the first time you do it, Try putting the butcher paper over it just to make sure because you don't want to ruin your machine and not put that paper on there and then regret it when you go to open it and see that there's ink that's been spilled out. So the, for the first time you do it, which I did, you put that butcher paper on there, you put it in there, you let it heat it up nice and, and evenly, and then when you take it out, you can look to see if that paper had any bleed marks on it, if the butcher paper had anything on it. But when I used my Ace Up paper, I had zero issues with uh, it bleeding out all over my, my mug press or anything like that. So I don't worry about putting butcher paper on. Um, a lot of people were asking about the light going out. The light does go out when you use something unusual in the mug press because you got to remember it's it's the technology inside the mug press is supposed to tell you exactly how long and when, like, it tells you how long it's supposed to be in there. It heats it up to the perfect temperature every time, tells you how long it's supposed to be in there, which is why you see the lights light up like that. Once that cup comes to temperature, that light goes out because to the mug press, it's done. It doesn't need to heat up anymore. So when you're heating up something like a 20 ounce or a 30 ounce tumbler in your mug press and that light goes out, um, that's not necessarily meaning that there's anything wrong. That is your mug press's way of saying it's, it, your object is up to temp and it doesn't like, because it's not made for like tumblers and stuff, even though you can still make it in there, uh, it will, the light will go out. It doesn't mean anything. It just means that your cup is up to temperature that it's supposed to be. And if it was a mug, it would be done. So we're going to go ahead and let that heat up. We got to make sure we have our heat gloves, which I have one of them right here. I should have the other one as well. But while that's heating up, um, I'm going to pause you. I promise it won't take another week <laughs> for me to come back. As soon as that, that light goes to that last one, I'll bring you guys back to show you what we got. All right. And as you can see, it's almost done over here. So as soon as that last uh, light comes on, it'll be ready. And we'll put the second one in. Now we got a blinking light. It's almost done. A few more seconds here. And because I didn't have it touching the bottom, I want to make sure that when I do open it, that I grab it quick. Because if not, it's going to slide down onto that metal plate at the bottom. So I'm going to make sure to grab hold of it before I open up that plate. Um, but yeah, it looks good so far. Nice and dark in there. I like the fact that you can see the inside of it. Um, so that's awesome, but I'm wondering how this is going to look because as you guys know, if you do sublimation, it doesn't do white. Oh, and for those people that were asking about the smoke, yes, it does smoke. It, it, it makes things hot. Anytime there's heat, there will be smoke. Don't worry. You're fine. So we're going to go ahead and close this. And while we're, while we're sublimating this one, we're going to take a look at this one. Uh, usually you want to let these cool down before you start messing with them. But for video time sake and everything else, I'm gonna just go ahead and open it. Um, that and I wanna make sure this one's open and I can look at it beforehand. Uh, and since this is a new mug press, make sure everything's working properly. So I just have my tweezers. Now, if you have tweezers, uh, Cricut has their own brand of tweezers. You don't necessarily need their brand, but I would suggest, especially with glass, that you use blunt end tweezers, which I'm gonna put those away and find my blunt. All right, so I got my blunt end tweezers. I'm gonna go ahead and open this bottom part. And be careful, because again, it is very hot. So you wanna make sure you have on your heat glove, or gloves, I just can't find my other one. I swear I'd lose my head if it wasn't attached. All right, so we're gonna pull that tape off. Time for the grand reveal here. How did it work? How did it sublimate? Because I get a lot of questions about this doing glass. <gasps> Look at that! I love it! And because sublimation doesn't do white, I think there might be a special printer for white sublimation. But because it doesn't do white, 
Um, I'm not expecting the the around in between the the emojis to be white, but look at how cool that came out. I'm sorry, let's get you focused. Oh my gosh, that's so cool! And the distressed look is supposed to be there. We have a little ghosting right there on that little guy. But other than that, it turned out really well. And seeing as how these cups have been sitting this entire time since uh, I had the incident with the mug press, that's actually not bad. So we're going to give the other mug a few minutes to get heated up here, which shouldn't take as long as this one because this one was the first one I've made in this particular mug press. Um, so it's already flashing. Take you over here. It's already flashing on its third one. And as you can see on the inside there, we have a dark purple. Um, it's kind of like a geode. So we're going to let that do its job and we'll be right back. All right. And that one's done. So I'm going to be careful there. I'm going to go ahead and turn off my mug press for right now. And let's see how this one turned out. Look at the vibrancy of that purple. Oh my gosh. All right. So let's see. Let's take off the tape. And I'm going to actually let this one cool because it's a little warmer than the other one was when it came out. So we're going to grab that tape. Again, be very careful because it is going to be very hot. Just trying to get this tape. And this is, again, another reason why it's good to use blunt tweezers instead of uh, sharp, pointy ones. You don't want to scratch up your glass. So let's see. Whoa. Okay. So we're going to get rid of that sub paper. And there you have it, folks. Look at the geode effect on that. And that right there is just a little bit of residue from the paper. No biggie. All you need to do to get rid of that, a little warm, soapy water after it cools down, and it'll be perfect. But look at that. Isn't that cool? Matter of fact, I'm going to let this cool down. I'm going to get rid of that residue on the top there, and I'm going to bring it back after it's cooled down. So we're going to let it cool down, and then we're going to wash that residue off there. All right, so now what I have now is a, a, a damp napkin or a paper towel. And you see that residue up top there? I'm just going to rub it. Just rub it with that wet paper towel and it comes right off. I'm not 100% sure why it does that, but it comes off very easily. And as you can see, the geode effect on this mug is incredible. Like, I absolutely love it. So, can the Cricut Mug Press do glass? Yes, it can. It can do either regular glass or it can do op uh, the uh, frosted mugs. So there you have it. Um, that is it for this video. So thank you guys for being patient for this video because I know a lot of you have been asking for it and asking when you were going to get this video. And I wasn't sure what to do about my mug press at first and then, you know, getting that all figured out. But as you can see, that sublimates these glass mugs perfectly. I absolutely love the way that they turn out. So if you're looking to do glass in your mug press, just be very careful, of course, because it does get really hot because it is glass. So, yes! But with that said, folks, I gotta get out of here. Again, thank you so much for watching. All right, welcome back. So, as you heard me say in the video, I was able to contact Cricut the first time I messed up my mug press, and they did send me out a second mug press in the with the agreement that I would send back the old one, which I do plan on sending it back. Um, I'm actually sending it back tomorrow because um, I had to wait for this one to get here before they had. They told me to send it back in the box. Anyways, so when I got my mug press, I hadn't used it for a couple of days. And then the first thing I pressed was that first mug, which was the one you just seen me press, which is this. This was the first blank I put into this mug press. And then, of course, the second one was the glass purple one. Okay. After the video was finished i wanted to check the mug press to make sure it was okay so when i turned it on i let it sit so that it can warm up and as you can tell my hand is on the part that i keep telling you guys not to touch why am i okay with my hand being here 
as you can see the lights are not shining on the mug press then it's going to throw a red ring that is what i call the red ring of death that means that your machine is broken and cannot be repaired uh that means you cannot use this machine anymore um and there you have it there's your red ring it will blink and do that a couple of times and then it shuts off if you go over to the Cricut website and look on their site, it says make sure you're using Cricut compatible items in your mug press. It gives you a couple of things that you can do, like let it sit for a while, uh, try to re-update it, like uh, try to do a new cycle of like you're doing it as if you just got it. So trying to re, essentially you're, you're trying to reset it up and seeing if that will work. It does not. When... I did it the first time. I thought my heating element went out on my mug press, and that is why they sent out another one. This time, I let them know that it was because I used the wrong blank. Because I used the wrong blank, they are unable to replace my mug press. Now, the mug presses are under a one-year warranty, but because I used the wrong blank, they will not do another warranty on it, which I am completely okay with. Um, that was my, that was my fault and I shouldn't expect them to keep replacing it while I'm experimenting. So I went ahead and ordered another one. I'll have another one next week. So don't feel bad. I already have another one coming, but I wanted to show you guys this video as a cautionary tale as to what not to do with your mug press. There are plenty of things that you can make with your mug press, but glass mugs are not one of them. So please heed my warning and tell your friends, share this video, tell everybody you know, glass and your mug press will kill your mug press. You will red ring, which is that red light comes on, and it will no longer work again. Again, this is not hot. It did not get hot after I made that second one, and essentially now it's just a paperweight. Um, I'm okay making this mistake because I am able to go out and just purchase another mug press. Not everyone has that luxury, and I wanted to put this video up. I wasn't going to put it up at first because I thought people were going to try to still put glass in it. And then I realized if I don't put up a video showing my mistake with the mug press, somebody else might possibly make this mistake and cost themselves $200. I don't want that to happen. And again, because I'm able to just go out and buy another mug press, I'm okay making the mistake. I'm okay with the fact that Cricut did, they did replace it once for me. And I am very grateful for that. They were very kind to me. Even the second time when I asked them, you know, why is it that it won't do this? And this, they told me, you know, you're, you're not supposed to use glass in there, only ceramic sublimation stuff so essentially check out their website they tell you exactly what types of blanks to use in here because i'm experimenting and i was asked the question can you use glass in your mug press it's the only reason i did it if you have a regular mug press that's not cricket brand go ahead and use it for your your glass sublimation or if even if you have a convection oven but i would not use the cricket mug press for your uh, your sublimation or using it with cricket brand stuff um, I would only use like your your normal tumblers and stuff like that. I will have more videos on the Cricut Mug Press as soon as mine gets here next Monday. Um, but for right now, of course, obviously, I can't do another Cricut video because I broke this one. So um, this is essentially a paperweight now. It cannot be used anymore. I did already buy a new one, but I wanted to let you guys know that can you use glass in your mug press? No, you cannot. It will kill your mug press and then you'll have to either buy another one or you'll be without one. So please, please, please do not put glass in your mug press. So I guess that answers that question. If you have any other questions about the Cricut Mug Press, please leave those down in the comment section below and I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as I possibly can. But with that said, I must now bid you adieu. But not for reminding you, that it's hard out here in these crafty streets, so please remember to wash your hands, don't touch your face out in public, keep your six feet, and always try to be kind, be courteous, be cool. Bye, guys. <laughs>